All right, so what do y'all want to talk about? Probably that same dude. Change your candlesticks first? What do you mean? Wait, what do you mean? Wait, what do you mean by that? Change my candlesticks first. That shit ugly? All right, you can get off my dick, bro. <laughs> I'm just playing, bro. Um, what you want, black? I can change it to black. I mean, I'll fuck with the green and red, bro. Fuck with the green and red. I don't know. I've been I've been messing with this a lot lately. I mean, it doesn't really matter. As long as I'm making money with my candlesticks, does it matter? As long as I'm making money with my candlesticks, does it matter for real, bro? Gold. We can, we can talk about gold. I mean, there's nothing really to talk about on gold, but I mean, we can hop into it. Uh, what was I going to say? Make my zones far back. You Wait, when making zones, how far back you start drawing? Um, Me personally, when it comes to like marking up zones, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Oh, that's what I wanted to tell you guys, bro. I missed this trade and I'm so sick that I missed it. But this is like a perfect example of what like what what I'm looking for every single time. Like this is a perfect example. Like just go back and look at this chart. And this is a perfect example of like everything, bro. All right. So I seen this this morning at like I seen it like early this morning when I woke up. You took this EU trade? Oh yeah, good GG's for you. I, I seen it this morning. I had my alert like right here. It went off. I looked at it and I was like, should I take that? And I was like, dang, I should take that. And I'm just now looking back at it and like, I'm sick, but it is what it is, bro. It's trading. But yeah, this, this trade was crazy. I seen this like cartoon chart. I'm dead. Um, it was this and it was another one. It was another, it's, I got a few trade setups that I have to show you guys. So you can get like, this one is actually a good trade setup. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. But don't worry about this. But yeah, this is a good trade setup because if price, uh, when is this euro cat? So what is this trade in London? So if you get a London session where price is pushing volume back above here, you can really target these highs and get a good move off of here and put like your stop loss roughly below here, depending on what structure looks like that day. But yeah, if, if this moves pretty good here in London, you can really catch some good buys off of this. What does side think about lit trading? I don't even know what that is, bro. I don't even know what that is. Make my screen darker. It's hard to see my lines. Wait, 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 wait. All right, give me one sec, give me one sec, give me one, give me one sec. It's morning. All right. All right. Give me a sec. You said make my chart darker. I'm going to do that. Give me one sec. I don't know what it looks like on you guys' side. So tell me what you see. Is this better? The background is way too bright. Is this better? Y'all like this? Doesn't change. Is this better? Your stream is too clean. You're no longer trading NAS. Who said that? I trade, trade whatever. <laughs> what the? I hear code in the background, like fucking. Oh, yeah. It's still kind of bright. Oh my God, bro. All right, now you guys are like, my charts are fine, but they're like tripping, bro. Do I need to go on black? Yeah, like come on i know you guys stop stop trolling me bro you gotta stop trolling me bro on gray bro i can see my charts hold on let me they're, they're on androids think i'm blind bro all right let me let me all right it is what it is i don't know what y'all looking at bro i can see my charts my charts are too bright all right fuck it bro. you just cut the dim it Make my zones darker. All right, that I can do. You guys, you guys are complaining. I'm on my iPhone. All right, now you guys just can't see. 
All right, you know what? We're just gonna do it. We're just gonna do white because I like white. And then we're just gonna do black. Matter of fact, I think I got, uh, I think I had a template for it. No, I didn't. Oh, I'm sick. All right, can you guys see this? Can you guys see this? <laughs> But I'm not even, bro, all you guys are like texting at the same time. So I'm not skipping your message. I'm, I just can't see your message. Did you buy US 30 today? They watching this from a potato. All right, you guys can see. All right, so uh, what was I finna explain? I, bro, I forgot what I was finna explain. All right, right? So when it comes to liquidity induced, bro, I don't even know what the fuck that is, bro. <laughs> I'm good. All right. So when it comes to trades, bro, what I like to focus on is like what happened, let's say, uh, in the past two weeks. That's what I really care about. What happened in the past two weeks doesn't even have to be that. Like this is a month out. But as long as I can see structure, if there's enough structure for me to go off of, so like I could look at this and I could be like, mm, I could see a little bit of structure. I could see there was highs here, it was broken, retested, and then continue. But as long as I see like this right here, I don't need anything else but this right here, right? I can see there was a high made, a correction. I see the resistance right here, the indication, a correction. I can use this. I, I can do all this if I want. But as long as I could see some structure, that's all that matters. I can just use this. So when it comes to like finding trades, bro, you don't have to do all this to find a trade. You can literally just pick something. If you find a high, if you can find a support and a resistance, that's all you need because this is where the indications and corrections come from. So this is literally all I need right here. This this high and this this level of resistance and this level of support. Because then we can see price made an indication for us. So we know back above this level, we can get a push up to here. Boom, boom. And that's what we're looking for. So right now, right? This will be an indication of how high price wants to go. So wherever price stops and starts trending back down, that's how that's how high we know price is gonna go. So then we're gonna mark that, right? And then once price comes back above that level, we know we can take trades up to that level again. And that's basically what I look for every time. So that being said, um, let me see something. Um, like something like this. I think we just went over this. Or we probably didn't, right? So let's say we start from over here, right? There is, my apologies, got highs. So in this area, right? Let's just start over. Let's just start over. Right? So we have a level of support. Price is on this downtrend. And how we know this, this is basically going to teach you how to search for a reversal. But I'm not looking at the chat. So I'm not like, you ignored it. Wait, what? What about that high that got missed? I don't know what you're talking about right now. Wait, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. But all right. So... This, this is mostly what y'all have to pay attention on because if you focus on how the trend changes or how structure change, you can literally catch anything because the same way, the same way this one up is the same way structure is. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you. All right, let's just go back here, right? And this is pretty much picking anything. On a smaller time frame, it's still gonna build the same kind of structure you would see on a higher time frame, right? So we found a level of support. And I know it's pretty choppy, but I just want you guys to pay attention that structure is everywhere. And we can see that price had this resistance here and it was broken. So back above this level, we know price is pushing higher above here. Now we know the same thing here, right? It's pretty much the same thing. I know it's pretty choppy, but I just want to let you know that structure is everywhere on every time frame. So let's just go back. Um, what was he at? Yeah. Let me just go back. Fuck that. Right. Mm. All right. So basically what I like to do is find when the trend is ready to change, when something is ready to go. Let's go back here. I don't know why I change. All right. So as prices on this downtrend has a low, makes a high, fails to make a new low, but it fails to make a high. So then we wait for that low to be broken. There's another indication under this level, yada, 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 pullback or correction and continuation. Same thing, same thing. All right. 
So then we get to here, right? And this is what most people don't understand is once we get to this level, this is our support level. In order for us to say that price is still going down, oh, bro, what are you guys talking about? All right, now you guys are just talking. I'm gonna just mute this, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna just mute this. All right, so he's talking about lit trading. I don't even know what lit trading is. I don't know what a liquidity inducement theorem is, bro. But yeah, so when price is finding a level of support, this is what you wanna be like. If price wants to continue to sell, it's gonna sell under here. You can't be like, you're looking for sales and price is not breaking any levels of support. So like over here, right? Once price made this low, you couldn't say anything about sales unless price was back under here again. Like no, no reason should you be thinking sales if price is up here. Because in this area, because you got to think, a uh, level of support. Somebody's drawing on my chart, bro. Right? Yeah, bro. They be acting like kids drawing on my chart. Anyways. Anyways, um, you got to think of a level of support as buyers being at this level. You got to think of buyers being here, pushing price up. So if price is above here, that means more buyers are in control than sellers. But if price is below here, then you have more sellers on your side to help push price down. Does that, does that, well, y'all can't talk anyways, but I hope that makes sense. So with that being said, you can't be like, I'm looking for sales and price is above the low. This was made. So there was a high made and then there was a low made. In order for us to say sales, price has to be under this low. So the whole time price is up here, you're just paying attention to what it's doing up here by highs, highs, and highs, right? So it just continue to get lower, but it still hasn't broke this low yet until it comes here, right? And most people will be like, well, why couldn't we catch it from here when it was selling? Or why couldn't we catch it from here when it's selling? Because me personally, I don't like stressing out about my trades. I don't like stressing out at all about trading. So I want to get in. And I know I'm good. Well, I don't have to look at my trades again. So with that being said, hold on. Appreciate it. No, the other one, that one. Appreciate it. I don't have my LEDs in the kitchen anymore. But yeah, so back to what I was saying, you always wanna look for sales under a level of support and you always wanna look for buys above the level of resistance because you want you want to be in a trade where price is giving you an indication of who's mostly in control of the markets. If, if you're selling and you're on a team where sellers are mostly in control, who you think is gonna win overall. So with that being said, um, price ended up selling, giving indications and then we stopped here. Right, so we have this level of support. Then remember what I said, when price is above this level, there's more buyers in control of this level, right? So after price makes a new low, it's gonna make a high for itself, right? And this is what you wanna pay attention to. So I'm gonna just delete all this. As soon as it breaks all this, right here. All right, so there's a low and there's a high. This is the only two things. So after price makes a new low, something like US 30 right now, since it has a new high, it can make a new low. And that's what you have to focus on. So there's a low and there's a high. Anything else, we don't care. We don't trade in between here because we don't know who's in control. All we know is we have a new low and there's a high. That's all we know. So we're not trading anywhere in between here because we don't know what's going on, right? All right, so then price gives us a push up and an indication. So now we know above this level, I don't know why I use a circle, but it's whatever. Above this level, we know price is always gonna come up to this level, right? So anytime we take a trade above here, we should be looking for price to come here. We get a correction and price comes back above here, right? So we already know what it's gonna do when it's back above here. So what we can do 
is we can take a trade based off of here and we can keep our stop levels below here. Now, in some cases, you can do this. You can, you can go in, let's say we was ready to take this trade, right? Let's say we was ready to take this trade. We can go in to a smaller time frame and look for structure there as well too. So now we can look on here and be like, okay, price is above this level. I, I could probably put my stop loss a little bit shorter, probably here and not risk that much. Or if you want to, you can say below these lows or however you want to do it. But mostly I use the higher time frame when it comes to stop losses, just because the smaller time frame sometimes can be a little choppy and, and whatever. But this, this also helps with the people that are scared to risk a lot, right? This is, this is for people that are scared to risk. But once price is back above this level, it's, it's trying to do the same thing that it's doing right here. Nothing different. It's literally trying to do the same thing it does here back over again. Like nothing different. Like nothing different at all. all right? So with that being said, what you will be waiting for too. Now, this, this comes with a lot of patience, bro. And some of you guys, I feel like some of you guys, you guys got to start practicing day trading first. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Some of you guys probably got to practice day trading first because swing trading is like a whole different mentality. Um, the reason I'm saying day trading first, not swing trading first, and then going to day trading is because when, if, you swing, if you swing trade first, you're going to get into a habit of like not wanting to get into everything. But then if you day trade, you get to test everything. So I, I, I was a day trader first before I became a swing trader. I'm a swing trader now. I still like to day trade here and there, but I, I mostly swing trade. So when I first started, I day traded and I, I, I figured out what I like getting into when I don't like getting into. So it's like it's like the same way as like playing sports or playing basketball in a sense, right? You're going to shoot 100,000 shots before you be like, okay, this is this is what I like to do. This this is my shot. You get what I'm saying? So it's the same thing. It's the same thing with trading, bro. You you gotta get into a bunch of trades, not stupid trades, but get into the trades that you see, the setups that you see, and then be like, okay, this is what I like to do, or this is this is what I like to get into, or this is the pair I like. You get what I'm saying? Don't let don't let fucking um all these big big Instagram dudes tell you like. Oh, I only trade GJ, so you do the same thing. Or I only trade US 30, so you do the same thing. Bro, test the waters, see what you like. Price action works for everything. I'm gonna be honest. Price action works for everything. There are some pairs out there that are pretty shitty. I'm gonna be honest with you. There's some pairs out there that are terrible to trade on, but it still trades price action. It's just terrible to trade on. Cause some of them be slow. Some of them, bro, just if you like slow, slow pairs, then get into that. If you don't, if you like something fast, then try US 30 or try ind ind indices. Or, you know, if you, you like staying up late at night trading London, trade some GJ pairs or I mean, um, GBP pairs, you know what I'm saying? Or trade some Euro pairs or something. Find what you like. So I always get off topic sometimes, bro. So with that being said, um, what you'll be waiting for in this scenario is to see if price is going to give you an indication. And the reason I got off topic about the swing trading and day trading is because when it comes to price action, you're trying to trade with the trend. So if the trend is telling you that it still wants to keep going, then sometimes you can hold, sometimes you can't hold. So as we've seen already, it was going up pretty high. So I'm going to just explain what happened. So we're going to continue. And price gave us another indication. Now you can do one of the two things. One, the smart way, you can take parts, you can take partials, if you have two positions, you could take one position off and hold the next. Because why? Because price gave you another indication. So whatever comes next after this indication of price telling you it wants to come this high, is going to be a correction. And you know what happens after a correction? It's going to be continuation because price already gave you an indication that it wants to continue higher. Just think of this. And this is, this is what I mean by liquidity. So don't fucking confuse yourself. This is what I mean. When price is here, right? If price gives you, if it's on the indication, so like back over here, right? An indication. Without this indication, we would have never known where price wanted to go back above this level. So anytime you see price breaking new levels, so right here, when you're seeing price breaking this high and it broke here, you're not, you're never really going to know where it wants to go to. 
So that's why we wait for these indications. We wait for price to tell us where it's going to go because it's going to correct itself. And then we're going to get the free trade because we already know what, what it wants to do. It's like we already know the cards to play. So this is where liquidity comes into play. There's people out here that don't know who I am, that don't know any price action at all. They don't know how you know trading works. There's people out there that do a nine to five and they just blindly trade based off of how they feel. Oh, price is mooning. Let me get in for a buy because it's going up. You get what I'm saying? So they're going to get into something like this. They're going to think their trade is going to go from $50 to $10,000 in one day because it's like, oh, it's breaking, it's breaking resistance. They're taught if it breaks resistance, just get in for a buy, right? That's what they're taught on the YouTube channels and everything. That's what they're taught. So when they're getting into this, they don't know where they're going to target. They got some crazy ass TP up here that's going to take their account from $500 to $100,000 in one trade. So they got some TP up here, right? Little do they know, price is going to give them an indication of where it wants to go long term. So with this being said, this is the highest price is going to go long term for right now until price pulls back and then continues higher. So with that being said, let's just keep going down, right? And we see price keep going down back below here. All right now, I want you to think about this, right? The same people that was buying this, and I'm pretty sure this wasn't in session. If people was saying, oh, this broke back above here. But if we look at it, we can tell which, which ones are in session, which ones are not in session. So let me just go back here. Yeah, this happened to be like right when session opened and it started to break structure to the downside. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, so this session came in, it shot up. But then the session came in and started dumping off. So we would we to avoid that conflict anyways. We want to see bullish structure throughout the whole session. So let's continue, right? Think about the people that was buying this, right? Right, right around here. Think about the people that was buying this. And they didn't know what to take out. There's people that got stop losses here. There's people that probably got, that are scared to trade. They probably got stop losses here. And then you probably got people down here with stop losses, which is a little bit crazy. But hey, man, people do a lot of I've seen a lot of crazy things. bro. So with that being said, these guys stop loss here. These guys stop loss here. Anybody down here stop loss here. So you know what the market is going to be? It's going to be happy now because now it has more money to push higher. I hope this is not confusing any of y'all. But now since price is stopping everybody out, it has the potential to push higher. It's got a lot of money to push up. So think of like, think of the market like that. It just, it's really the pullbacks is when price want more money. The breakouts is when there's a lot of money into the market and it's trying to extend it out. It's trying to get all the, like, as it's, I, as it's buying up, this is just money getting pumped, 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 pumped. Until people are like, all right, I'm good with my trade. I'm gonna take profit. And then there's no more money here anymore because everybody's taking out their trade. They're spending it on fucking Lamborghinis and shit. I don't know, right? They're taking out their money. So just think of that. When price is mooning or dumping, just think of it as people are all getting in and everybody's happy. And then when price is correcting, that's people taking profit. People are getting out of their trades. So it's no more money. So you know what it's going to do? It's going to come back. And there's people down here like, oh, I wanted to get in that trade too. So they're going to be getting into trades too as well. So that's how the whole thing cycle works again. Like if people, you know, put in money, they're going to take out later on, but then, Hey, I made hella money off of that. So I'm going to want to get back in. You get what I'm saying? So like, just think of the market like that. All right. So this was a support level. Reason why this is important because most people's stop losses are under here as well too. If they're holding long-term, but well, we're just going to keep going overall. All right. All right. So price starts to make his way back above here. You know what we can do? We can take a trade based off of price being back above here, but we can keep our stop losses below here because we don't want to see price breaking any lows. I'm I hope it was that example. Hold on. Does it come back down after this? Because I want to give a perfect example of like, I don't think it did either. It probably did here. I'll not touch this level first. I mean, I, I mean, I guess so. Let's say, 
I want to make a scenario too of like getting stopped out because there's some times where price will stop you out. Let's say, let's say we got into this trade, right? We got into this trade and we put our stop loss like I don't know, fucking right here. And we got stopped out. Let's say it didn't touch up here and it got stopped out, right? I'm gonna just fast forward. Right? Some of you guys are scared of this, and I don't know why you guys are. You guys will lose one trade, you guys will like lose a trade, and it'll be it'll be perfectly set up for you, and you'll be scared to get in this next time why is that why why is that you're reading price right it just didn't do what you want it to do the first time i'm just making an example i know it hit the first time up here but i'm just making an example if you got into this trade and let's say it came up to here and then came back down and stopped you out from right here let's say it did that why would you be scared to get in again when price is back above that level why is that wait i don't actually can y'all answer that question all right, give me a give me an answer. Give me an answer. Why do y'all feel like are any of you guys scared to get into a trade after you lose? Like after you lose one trade, like why do you feel like you're scared to get in the next? I'm gonna wait a little bit. Nobody, nobody want to answer that question. So none of y'all have this problem. So you're telling me 100 and, 101 people in here, and none of y'all have that problem. So you're telling me none of you guys lose. So none of y'all hit stop loss. Wait, can y'all even tell you? Ah, oh, I'm, I'm smoking. I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> my fault, my fault, my fault. Yeah, I'm sick. <laughs> You're sick, yeah. Aye, aye, my fault, 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 aye, 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 get off my dick, aye. Aye, so none of you, so, like, muted us. All right, so you guys got, all right, I'm going to unmute you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unmute you. All right, raise your hand, butt hurt, I'm dead. You guys got your hand raised. All right, we're going to freaking answer these questions. Who got their hand raised? Go, I'm not answering you, bro. All right, let's uh let's ask Eric, right? Yo, Eric, you gotta unmute. Oh shit, my bad. What's up, man? What's up? Sorry about that. I was like, I was like, oh stop, why am I? Yeah, no, um, my I mean guess my reason for why I don't enter in the trade is just because like once you lose, you're like, damn, is it gonna is it gonna continue breaking out? And then like you know, if it just reverses, then it's like, oh, damn, you never know. But yeah, it's just, I guess, why I really don't really enter again. Yeah, so you you feel like getting in, you feel like losing one trade means you're going to lose the next trade? Yeah, basically. Why is that? Like, why don't you, like, why don't you ever, like, do you, like, ever think that, oh, since that trade didn't work my way, you know, I feel like. Not for sure. For sure, like, I, I legit, like, I'll be re-entering. And then, like, I'll re-enter with the same exact stop, and then I get stopped out again, and I'm like, uh, are you serious? And then I'll do it, the, like, like legit, especially on the fun of challenges, like, I try to risk, like, maybe, like, half a percent or, like, two, uh, one percent on a trade, but then once you lose, like, three back-to-back -back on the same exact entry, you're just like, yo, you give up on it. I understand that. Then again, it's like, let's say this trade again, right? This trade right here, right? Let's say we lost that first one, it didn't hit up here, and came back and stopped us out. Why would you put your stop loss? Why would you put your stop loss in the same area you got stopped out? Why not put it where the structure is formed at? You get what I'm saying? Wait, did he go back on mute? Oh, I'm sick. Wait, it was Eric. Hold on. No. Oh, wait. Oh, I found them. Wait. What the? What the? Oh, no. All right, I found it. I found it. All right, yeah. There we go. I don't know. It's like I'm um, muted me for a second. But, um, yeah, no, so I I try. So a lot of times, especially uh, when price is moving hella fast, if I don't have a limit set right above, like, my stop area, then I don't get in too fast. Sometimes legit, like, I'll get wicked out, and then it drops, like, 30 points, and you're like, all right, I'm going to wait for – it's to hit another supply or support area. And the next, you know, right after that, it just obliterates again. It just goes through it again. And like, I'm very big on tight stops. Like I, I'm, I don't like using large stops. So like I'm using like 
50, uh, 50 point stops on US 30s, NAS. And like, I, I like have a good amount of risk on it. So like if it drops 30, 40 points, it's like one, 2% type. So like, I'm, that's why like my risk is very, very tight, but it's like, it's, it's a, it's a win and a loss situation. It's like, if I win, then it, it pays off. If I don't, then it's like, all right, I'm down like two, 3% for the day. Yeah, I felt that. I, I mean, that's understandable. I mean, it's just like, I always have the mindset, like, like I said the other day, where did I say that at? Did I say it on Instagram live? Uh, trading is not a, oh, no, I didn't. All right, so I was telling somebody else in another Zoom, I was like, trading is not a risk. So every trade I take, I don't look at it as a risk. I don't feel like I'm risking anything. It's like another opportunity for me. So I'm always taking every opportunity that I can get. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, ah, uh, he muted himself again. I'm sick. <laughs> so i treat i treat every every trading you know tight is better hey yo anyways i treat every every trade as an opportunity i don't think of it like oh i'm risking something i think of it as an opportunity to make money for myself can i call you after this it's the kid you were on with before oh what's up prodigy uh yeah great way to think yeah it's, it's it's a good way to think trading is probability can't be emotional bro bro as long as you're not trading with your fucking last you're going to be straight bro if you work a job bro you're going to be straight bro like i was telling somebody the other day i was like I worked two fucking warehouse jobs just to put money into my trading account and i wasn't even trading forex i was trading stocks you only make money going up you literally, you guys got it easy. You can make money going up and down, bro. You literally can make money going up and down. So it's like, bro, what are you like? What are you scared of? Anyways, um, yeah. So, anyways, let's get back in the into the charts. I'm gonna ask more questions in a bit after this, but um, yeah. So. Let's say uh, we got stopped out this trade and we can get back into this trade because it's back above here. So we're going to keep our stop losses. We can keep our stop losses below here, but we can keep it below here. Either one is up to you. Really, you just you put your stop loss based off of how you want to structure it. I Sometimes I like to go a little bit deeper, no homo, um, because I what? <laughs> I know because like, bro, I was on YouTube live the other day and they like everything I said was like, Everything I said was like wrong in their head, bro. So I, I literally can't say nothing around you guys. No, bro. I already know how they be, bro. So I'll be like, anyways, price has a level of support. You can put it here or you can put it here. All right. See, you see what I'm saying, bro? They always over exchange. So anyways, we're looking to trade back above this level. And we're going to be looking for a price to come up to this level because it's done it before. So we're, that's what we're looking for. We're going to keep our stop losses below the level of support or even here, whatever one you choose. Most of the time, I choose the one that's better, better supported. So this one, right? Um, risk management. I love risk management. Bro. Risk management or no, it's not even risk management. It's fucking uh, risk to reward. Some of you guys be getting into like, I don't understand how y'all trade like this, bro. I don't understand how y'all... I don't understand how y'all like get into a trade and it only be like 50 to 100 points, bro. I don't understand how you guys trade like that. Like if, my, if I can't get into a trade while I'm catching fucking, if I can't get into a trade while I'm catching like 400, 500 points plus, it's like, what's the point of getting into that trade? Like, I'm losing trading off my phone. I, I trade on a computer. I feel like it's elite. Trading on my computer is elite. Trading on my phone, like me having access to my phone 24 seven makes me feel like I'd be like over trading sometimes if I trade on my phone. It's just a mindset thing, but it really doesn't matter. I use magic keys. I got a pair of magic keys. Let's talk about settings, so on and so forth. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, don't have the mental to hold trades to 500 points. Bro, if you want to make some real money, bro, and the reason why I make more money than most traders, not even like a brag, is because like I'm not trying to catch fucking 20 pip trades. I'm not trying to catch 
I'm not I'm not trying to touch like 50 point trades, bro. That's not me, bro. I'm trying to make some fucking money. Like I'm trying to make some real money. About what you're talking about now. You're literally you can literally get a day trade for 400 points. You can get a day trade for 200 points. Because you're catching one to three, one to four trades. What are you talking about? It's just y'all think of day trades as trading every day. That's how y'all think of a day trade. Y'all think of day trades as fucking trading every day. I need to catch 200, 300 points every single day. That's not, that's not, bro. You don't have to, as a day trader, you don't have to catch day trades every single day to be called a day trader. That means you just trade you know, a day trade, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't think y'all guys are like, bro, I, bro, I'm so sorry for half of you guys, bro. Some of these guys taught you guys all wrong, bro. Some of these guys got y'all head like fucked up. How long do I usually wait for those big moves, bro? Bro, waiting on moves, swing trades, bro, can be like weeks. And then I'm so picky with my trades, bro, because I'm trying to maximize what I'm trying to make. Like I could take some of these small setups I see, but it's like, what's the point of like putting putting risk for a hundred points, two hundred points? I'm a dude that like I'm trying to catch the biggest tree. I'm trying to catch something nobody got. You know, name name. Well, never mind. I'm not gonna say that. No risk, opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm trying to get the biggest opportunity as possible. Can I get a free signal? I need to help my dad pay bills. Calm down. Ah, yo, that I'm supposed to be drinking water. That Mountain Dew is good, bro. And see, that's what's wrong with you guys, bro. You guys, are, you guys are not for real about this shit, bro. You guys just want to make money and fucking pay for Louis Vuittons, bro. You guys just want to buy Louis Vuittons and Lamborghinis, yo. Like, you guys are not really trying to change the world for real, bro. You guys are literally not, like, you guys are not, some of you are just not mentally there, bro. Set my parents for life. You guys are not mentally there, bro. Like, you guys are not ready for what it takes to, like, fucking hit top level. I mean, some of you guys can probably make, like, 500 bucks. If some of you guys can make, like, $1,000, but you guys are not even ready. You guys are not even mentally ready to, like, see 10K in front of you. How did I get there mentally? I mean, I started trading stocks, and I was, like, teaching myself. I mean, I kind of learned, uh, I might as well tell y'all this story. We can get back into charts in a bit. I guess there's going to be a mixture of psychology to it. So um, when I started trading, it was like my second month of trading. And this is when, this is when actually I think, uh, what, what, I want to say I didn't get my second job yet. I still had my first job. And this is what made me think that I should get a second job. So I ended up saving my first thousand dollars i didn't spend any money for weeks and i kind of just you know i was helping my mom pay her bills so it was like every time i got my 500 hundred dollar check every week i'll be giving 200 300 to my mom and just keeping the rest for me because that like it, it, she never asked but that's what i wanted to do for my mom so it took me like a couple weeks to get um save up to a thousand dollars I put that whole thousand dollars into my trading account really it was like nine hundred dollars and i had like a hundred dollars left so he said, let's talk about trading. We can talk about trading a bit, right? So um, I'm in the car, I'm in my friend's car and I'm just trading. It's like 9.30 in the morning, I'm trading stocks and I have the $900 account and I wanted to get rich in that moment. I wanted to be, I wanted to be sitting in that car with my freaking trading account at fucking $10,000 before I got out the car. That's literally what was in my mind. I was like, oh yeah, this trade is going to hit. I'm going to be rich. 
and I'm a, well, I'm not at the time, 10 K is a lot, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm going to be rich and I'm going to get out the car and I'm going to go back in and I'm going to quit my job. And I'm going to do what I want to do in life. That's what, that's what I was thinking in, in my head. So I hop into the trade and then like five minutes in the trade, I'm seeing draw now. So now I'm down like $150. And this is my second month of trading. So I'm like already, you know, used to seeing a drawdown. So then, you know, I'm chilling. I'm like, all right, it's just some drawdown. It's going to be okay. And then my trade goes into negative 300 and then negative 400 and then negative five. And then it just gets worse. And I'm like, ah, man, bro. It's like, I can't close. And then it was like, it got to the point where I was, I was damn near $700 in drawdown. And I, I was like, bro, I seen, I seen my account go to negative and then close me out of the trade, close me out of the position and go to zero, zero. And I lost my whole $900. And then in that moment, bro, all I could think was if I was patient, I would have made money. If I wasn't trying to get rich too quick, I would have made money. And then it made me think that I was like, wow, I'm just going to end up saving 900 again because I really wanted this shit. I really wanted to be financially free. So I was like, I'm not even going to trip. I'm going to just go back and make that money back. I'm going to go back, go back to my job and make that money back because I'm already like, I have a job. It's just, I was trying to take that opportunity to get rich, but I was trying to take it too fast. I was trying to, I was trying to snag an opportunity that wasn't for me. That trade was good for somebody else. That trade wasn't good for me at that time. So if I lost the trade, it's not good for me. It was good for somebody else. That's cool. But it wasn't my trade yet. Everything that happens to you was meant to happen to you for a reason. Everything that happens to you happens for a reason. You might have blown your account. That's probably, you probably, I, I heard somebody told me yesterday, it was like, they was like, sigh, I grew my account from $1,000 to like $4,000. I was like, damn, that's good. But then he was like, oh, I lost it. I lost 3,000 and now I'm back at one. And then with that being said, it's like, maybe you growing your account, you did it in a wrong way. Maybe, maybe you did it. Maybe you did it by over leveraging and then you got up to 4K or maybe you was over trading and got it to 4K. And the world was telling you, hey, it's good that you took your account from 1K to 4K, but you did it the wrong way. You don't want to build your, you don't want to build trading off of bad habits because then those habits don't last for too long. You might catch some lucky ass trades and then you get in some, some full margin trades and you might win a few, but it's, it's, it's a long-term game, bro. You guys are playing around, bro. I'm going to just stop talking. You guys are literally just playing around. Yeah, I'm done talking. Okay, um, but yeah, bro, um, Sometimes I see a sale set up. Wait, what? Um, wait, I'm trying to understand your story, bro. Basically, just like when I lost all my money, it was like, it was like, damn, bro. I was like, bro. It was like, damn, bro. I lost all my money, but it was like, what can you really do? Like when you lose your money, it's like, who the fuck are you gonna call? Mark is not giving your money back like what the fuck what are you gonna cry and complain like you literally if you cry get mad or whatever your money's gone so it's like what's the point of even crying what's the point of even being mad like yeah you probably made a bad decision but or you feel like you made a bad decision but i don't look at it like that i look at it as an opportunity that i could expand it more i just need to figure out how i'm going to take the next opportunity and make sure i maximize that opportunity So it's like, bro, it's like, I never looked at it as like, like once I lost that $900, I was like, all right, bet. I'm going to calm down and I'm going to just let, I'm going to let the opportunities come to me, bro. And then, then that same, same couple of like, I think it was like, um, two weeks later, I had my first thousand dollar trade. My first, it, it wasn't a lot at the time, but like at that time, bro, I remember 
I made a thousand dollars off of trading stocks in a fucking warehouse. And I told all my coworkers and it was like, they, they was like, they didn't believe me. Like I can just see the look on their face and they looked like they didn't even believe me, but I'm like, I, I made a thousand dollars off my phone, like a thousand dollars. I took it out and I had fucking like 3000, 3000 in my bank account, like in total. So I was like $4,000 up. I was like, wow, bro. I made a thousand dollars for my phone. And then it was just, I just kept doing what I had to do, bro. Without, you can't even spell billions without L's. You take a lot of L. But yeah, bro, it's like. It's like you can put your mind to what you. All right, so let's get back into the chart. So I'm going to just stop talking. All right, so um, back above this level, we're looking for price to push back up to this previous high. So as we already know, we'll just keep going. Price goes up to this high. Pretty simple, right? We're just looking for price to do the same movements that it's done before. Nothing different. We're looking for price to come here, up to here. Same thing. And we know price comes from here. So over here, up to here. What is it going to do? Here, up to here, right? Nothing different. You ain't really got to look for no confirmation, no nothing. You just know when price is... Traveling above here during session, you know the volume is going to push price up to here. Nothing else. You don't have to look for anything. If you want to, you can go in a smaller time frame and look for some structure, but you really don't need to do all that, right? You got price breaking the resistance. We know that when price is breaking resistance, we know buyers are in control above here. So with that being said, on a smaller time frame, we had a resistance. You can even say this, right? We can do this. Price had a high before session started because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so even even here, that's that's good as hell too, because price came back above this level. Yeah, so this is pretty good. So in session, you can see price came back above this level. You could have been taking a trade here. You could have did something down here, but really, um, yeah. Matter of fact, no, no, because yeah, that's that's right. I'm I'm totally off. Yeah, you could have did something here on this trade, but let's say you just took this trade, right? Still good. So then you just go based off of that, and you know price is gonna reach up to this level. So we're going to continue this trade and we see how that trade went. You see, all we were doing was looking for price to do the same exact thing that it did here. Here, right? Same exact thing. Right? Same exact thing. What's up, it? Dirty 30. I'm dead. I don't know. But it doesn't matter what chart I'm looking at. It does the same thing on every chart. Well, yeah, that's all we're looking for. Then we'll be looking for another indication that price wants to continue higher, which is that. I'm seeing if it made a big correction. I'm pretty sure. All right, so price starts making its way down. I want to say, yeah, I kind of seen that coming. But yeah, so price made an indication back above this level. It can come up to here. It started making its way down, making that low. And then price had the high right here. It broke that high, pulled back a little bit, and then came back above there and kind of took off from there. So then it started targeting this previous high that it reached. We can see all that on a smaller time frame, but I really didn't want to go that far. But as you can see, price is making lows. Price is making lows. Like I said, if you're going to continue to see sales, you want to continue to see price break support, right? So as we see here, right, we got price breaking support, price breaking support, price breaking support. So we can still say that hey, it's still selling, right? And also pay attention to the highs as well. You don't want to see highs being broken. Once you start seeing highs being broken, you should start watching out for those buyers. So as we can see, highs wasn't broken, highs wasn't broken. Then we made this little level of support. Matter of fact, we can just use this. We can say this. But I really want to use the highest point because it made a low and it started traveling back up. So I want to start using this, right? And then this when it broke a low. So you can see here, it was going up, make a high, made a low, made a high, made a low. And you can see here that the lows wasn't really breaking. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see that the lows, the candle closes, they wasn't breaking the other ones, right? And it was just going up. And then it finally broke, meaning it was back to selling. And then we make this low. 
then we was going to make our high and our high ended up breaking the previous high. So this means this is a higher high because this high is higher than this one. You get what I'm saying? So with that being said, higher highs and higher lows only happen in uptrends, right? So anything after that, you already know is going to be bullish above this level. So now we're going to be looking for buys back above this level. We're going to have our support level here. Because at the price makes something new, it's going to find a support for itself. How do you know a support? Because price, you'll see that price doesn't want to go any lower. Why didn't we use this? We can see price made a low, price made a small low high, and then price made a new low. So with it going back up here, we would have been like, oh, it just made a new low. So let me wait until it finds a level of support. Makes a high, makes some lows. Small high, then still making the same low, still hitting the same area. So we, we're, we're taking this highs go higher wait higher highs go higher got it yeah yeah something like that yeah anyways yeah so then would have been targeting this as well and as we can see price started making its way up to that level overall touching into here i don't know what that was but as long as you're down here you don't have to be straight don't be oh yeah don't beat them dudes either that be trying to get in a trade when it's like 75% done. Don't try to get into those trades. I'll be seeing y'all, bro. Y'all be trying to get into trades last minute. Stay away from those. And how would you know if it's, if it's almost, that trade is almost done, right? This is how you would know if the trade is almost done. All right, you see how... We have this high, right? You see this? You see this high? And we look over here, there's nothing else over here. So this means that was our indication. This is our correction. This is our continuation. The continuation is go, always gonna go with the indication ended. So this is where the indication ended. So anything above here, we don't know how far it's gonna go. So this is the end of the trade until we find some more like, think of it as like being in the dark. Or like, I don't know how I come up with these fucking like fucking analogies, but I'm fired with them. Think of it as being in the dark. You can't see nothing. But as price starts to move and give you more clues, it starts to un like come out of the dark. So up here is dark. You don't know what's going on over here. It's price is doing something up here, but you don't know yet. Until price starts revealing itself, giving away its position, then you know where to go. Right. All right. So we're just gonna continue. Um, what time is it? Oh, weird. Oh yes. Shouts out to ninety-seven people in here, bro. It was like twelve o'clock at night. Shout out to you. So, like I said, trade is pretty much over. We have this small indication that price wants to continue higher. So I'm pretty sure price will continue higher. And price stays making more indications. A little bit of consolidation here and there, but. Price starts to make his way back up. So yeah. Too many zones. Do I ever get in a situation where there's too many zones? Um, no, not really. It depends on what you're marking. Please go through US 30 for me. Day trading opportunities. I never feel like it just depends on what I'm marking, bro. It's just the background, dude. I just mean the background, dude. Oh, it's not. I don't know why I changed that. I mean, oh, yeah, here it goes. But yeah, so then overall, we even had this overall high right here. I forgot about this. This is the overall high. So price made a new high. That's why this full blown correction had came in earlier that we was looking at. So you know how we had this new high? It was also a new high of this as well. That's why this full-blown correction came through. And then price ended up being back above this level, giving indication above this level, pulling back, and then falling back above this level as well too. So yeah, this is all good for you as well. And price is now coming back above that level, as we can see. I'm just gonna, price is back above that level now. I'm be honest, I don't think that's a trade. I don't think that's a buy setup either. 
the reason why I say it's not a, I feel like it's just not a buy setup is because what, what did we talk about earlier? If price is not continuing to break these, you have to pay attention to that. And then we have this level of support. So price made a level of resistance and then a level of support. And what is it doing the most right now? We've seen all this, we know what happened here, but what is it doing right now? Price is breaking a low, indication, correction, more indication, correction, another indication. There's a correction here and price could possibly start selling them. So we just gotta see. So what indicators are we using? I'm done. Are you still answering questions? Can you go over, can you go over day trading setups? Um, yeah. I feel like, uh, I, so me personally, I feel like day trading on like the five minute or 15 minute is pretty good. I seen the one minute doing this thing, but I don't, I don't know about that. Now, when it comes to day trading, you can still do the same thing as you do on any other time frame. You just got to be a little bit more wiser with how you put your stop losses and everything. And I feel like you'll figure that out. I don't really day trade like that. You betting on US 30 sales? Yeah, I'm betting on US 30 sales. I can make the day trade. I can make the videos on Patreon down downloadable. If you had to put your trading styles in simple steps, what would it be? Wait, if you had to put your trading Say style, indication. In, yeah, indication, correction, continuation. There will be price will give you an indication. ICC literally made that. I'm dead. There's an indication of where price wants to go. A correction back under this level so we know back above this level price will go higher to up here and then a continuation back to that same level what the fuck i don't know why i just did that hey 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 can i get my chart back i don't know why i won't give me my chart back but yep so my position will come here and i have my stop loss below the low I'll be targeting up here. Make sense? ICC better than ICT. Hey man, I don't want no beef. Yo, that man has a freaking fan base. I'm not even gonna lie. ICT, that man has a freaking fan base. You do not want to. Fuck with smart money traders at all. Day trades. Yeah. All right, day trades. Okay, okay. All right, so when it comes to day trading, um, you can pretty much do this on the one minute, five minute, 15. I normally say five minute, 15, just because it's a little bit more secure, but you can do the same thing on anything else. All right, so when it comes to day trades, you obviously got to trade in session. So I'm going to explain like a day trade setup, all right? Coming into New York session, we want to have this, right? We want to have this level of resistance. And then as we find our level of resistance, we also have to find a level of support, right? So this was our level of support coming into the session. All right, then we have our indication. Then we have our correction back under here, right? So with this being said, it's gonna be pretty much the same thing. Freak Zoid. Boop. All right, calm down. Yeah, they do not play about that guy, bro. That dude is like, bro. Turn on session. Yeah. So coming into the session, we're not trying to trade anything coming into it. We, we want to really get a feel of what's going on. So this was coming into 930, right? So this is when we're supposed to be looking for our trades. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, bro. One thing you're going to do in day trading is lose. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. 
when it comes to day trading, I'll just be prepared for them losses and be prepared for them wins. It, it comes with the game. Just, just to remember that. I, I don't want you guys being like, oh, it's not. But look, coming into the session, this is 930. So before this, this is all building up for you. There's an indication. There's a correction. It kind of consolidates back into here. So market's open and you're ready to do some trading because the volume is kicking in. So once price comes back above this, below this level, you're feeling comfortable with taking a sell here because you know that price already gave you an indication back above, below this level. So you feel comfortable taking this first trade for your day, right? And then you keep our stop loss above the highs. It's pretty much the same thing as any other time frame, right? So I don't really care about how I mark it up. Then we got a big push down. We got some points. All right, so let me see. Let me see. Make sure this is right. Because this should be a one to three or a one to two. All right, so this was, let's just say, let's just be reasonable. Let's say you got out at 117 points. That's a decent day trade. One minute, too much noise. I mean, it depends on what you're looking at, to be honest. I don't feel like there's too much noise. I kind of always space out my chart anyways. Like some people look at their charts like this, and I can see why you'd be like, it's too much noise. But then again, I can still see structure. But when I like zoom in, kind of do it like here, like right now, right? I mean, this is ugly, but it's no volume. So I kind of space out my chart, kind of look around. So, I mean, it just depends on who you are. I don't feel like, it, yeah, in your opinion, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, it just depends. I'm so used to looking at the charts, I can see it. So, like I said, uh, what was that? 100, what did I say? 117? It was like 117 we got on 117 120 and you would have been risking like 30 points so what is that a one to four trade yeah that's a one to four trade setup a day trade setup and you could have been risking 30 points so you could have been getting in roughly around here risking 30 points having or even 40 and then you could have made 120 100 and you get what i'm saying just more candlestick yeah bro that's me on that pick if you zoom out, it's pretty clean. Yeah, if you do zoom out, it's pretty clean. And then let's say you held for more because that's a new low, a correction, and then a continuation. Bro, this trade could have went for like 200 and I, I want to say that's like 200 points. Sir. Bro, it won't let me do it. All right. This trade over went for like 211 points, and that's the easy day trade. Entry level for this trade. This entry level for this trade would have came from price breaking this low during New York session. The reason why we didn't take over here is because the markets wasn't open yet. Sometimes you, you can get into trades before the session starts, but just to be sure, you want to trade when the session opens or later on in the sessions. But you don't want to trade before because the volume kicks in at 930. I know New York starts at 8, but the volume kicks in at 930. All right, let's be for real. So then we can put our stop loss above here. And we'll be looking to take however many points, you know, like I'm saying, this was 130 points or this one was all the way down here was like 200 points. And that was just a simple trade setup. And all we did was use the same thing as we use on the higher time frame. We waited for our indication, price pulled back, 930 open, and then our, our indication ended up playing out overall. So after, yeah, you want, the reason why I'm saying this, bro, because I've seen, I've seen it before. I've seen some trades at fucking eight o'clock and it looks tasty and get obliterated by 930 open. I've seen a lot of people get obliterated at 930 open. So you just want to always be prepared. I mean, take your risk however you want. Me personally, I'm trying to teach you the safe way. As you start trading more, like I said, if you do day trades first, if you focus on day trading first, you'll get a hang of swing trading. But just try to get, try to get a feel of what day trading price action is bro like just get a feeling sweet spot i mean i mean i'm gonna have to yo uh i'm not even gonna say that name but the one that said 9 30 to 11 a.m i'm gonna have to fight you on that one because bro the good trades be happening around after 12 i'm gonna be honest like if there's nothing going around going on at like 9 30 to like 10 it's all fun and gains until you trade, yeah, open account blown. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm saying, bro. I'm telling you, in New York session, when it opens, bro, 
you can really like if you don't know what you're doing and you just playing around you can get fucked up so let's get into the rest like because day trades you can take however many right let's say we caught something like this price is still continuing down and then we find this level of support this level of support happened to be something we found on a higher time frame too as you can see this was like a higher time frame pullback right so then let's just go back and like i said you can trade five minute 15 minute one minute whatever you feel comfortable with five minute it looks the same just less candles like everything is just less candles so with that being said we know price was coming into this level of support right so then we could have been on a smaller time frame looking for a little day trade oh what, what am i going to do all right so i can see that price made a low and price made a high Sai says after price makes something new so this is a new low we have to look for that high so with that being said we have the new high right so that means we're not trading anywhere in between here because we don't know who's in control we have a high and we have a low we have this low we have this high so we don't know who's in control then we get a break that's our indication a correction retest whatever you want to call it and then you can trade off of here keeping your stop loss below this level now i want to say this one this one was 30 50 points and then you could have caught let's just be realistic let's just say you caught like let's just say you, let's be realistic 150 because nobody's always getting out at the top of the top so you caught you risked like 50 60 points to catch like 150 points, so 100 or whatever. Wait, what were you guys talking about? Open is an orange news folder every day. I'm dead. It, it, it'd be like that, bro. I mean, it's the same thing, bro. You're just breaking it down on a smaller time frame. Stop being, stop being on your charts like this, and you won't figure. It won't be fucking confusing. This. Kind of zoom in a little bit, see what's going on. If you can't find anything, go to the next time frame. If you can't find anything on this time frame, go to the next one. But to be honest, bro, like every time frame just makes sense. Like, I can see something on this one. I can see something on this one. Wait, let's go over here. I can see something on this one. The farther you go out on the time frame, the that's what you're that's what you're depending on. So if we're on the one hour, we're looking for a longer term move. If we're on the five minute. We're looking for a short-term move. If we're on a one minute, we're definitely looking for a short-term move. So stop trying to be on a one hour trying to catch two fucking 100 points. It's not going to work. You get what I'm saying? Stop trying to be on a one hour catching 100 points. If, you're going, if you only want to catch 100 points, get on the five minute. Get on the one minute. If you're trying to catch 300, 400, 500 plus points, be on the one hour or more. If you really want to get into it, the fucking daily is a beautiful setup for 4,000 points. We have our indication. We're having a correction now. Oh, my God. Um, we still got more. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna go to sleep with a cop. What's over? Huh? No. I'm still talking. I'm just getting mad tired, bro. I got to Depends on many factors, especially when news is coming out. Will consolidation happen after correction or before? I mean, you don't, you, we never know when consolidation comes, bro. It's the market. When do you enter, when do you enter when price do, doesn't touch the support or go under it? Sometimes price just buys after the pullback, but then I don't get in because it doesn't touch support, meaning. Are you going to sell under the support? Mario. I am selling US 30. If it falls even the slightest bit below here, I am slamming a gajillion lots on US 30 and I am selling it down to this low. There will be no questions asked. There will be no questions asked. 
if I see US 30 under 32,600, I am selling the mess out of it. I don't care what happens. <laughs> Let me stop on with you guys. All right, but um, yeah, bro. Next week after this official news, he lost his marbles. Full margin sales. Oh yeah, I'm full margin. Oh yeah. Last time I full margin, what happened? Everybody full. Everybody we Sure. Imagine full margin and 200 million. Anyways, he said account blown. Oh, I'll be sick. <laughs> yeah, I'll be sick, bro. Have any of y'all like, bro, that's a Billy? She was, that's a Billy. 200 million down the drain. I'll be sick. It's not even my two million, 200 million dollars either. I'll be sick. He said that big ass sale last year. Yeah, this 4,000 point move. Yeah, I remember this trade. It was like over here. I caught this whole sale all the way down here. And it was like 4,000 points. Yeah, I caught it like right here. And I got out because I was like, yep, it hit my target. So I was like, I'm good. That's it. Those are hard. Liquidity, bro. Because what what do I tell you? If price, all right, so bro, when it comes to trading, bro, you have to pay attention to what happens first. Because nobody ha nobody pays attention to what happens first. So when price, so when price broke this low, when price makes something new, it can do whatever it wants after. Because remember, there's breakout traders trading this. It broke a support, so they're they're selling this. They don't know where it's going. They're just like, oh, it's selling. Then price pulls them out, hitting their stop loss, hitting their stop loss. They're going to keep selling this. People like, to, people like to put their stop loss here. And then they get stop loss hit. They're going to put in more trades. So price is trying to take their money and they're just getting into trades, selling, selling, blowing their account. And price gets up to here, breaking highs. So now it's like it's got everybody thinking, oh, buys. But what happened first? So then buyers are getting into this. They're like, oh, it's buying, it's buying. So they're getting into trades and it's taking them out too later on. And then you got you got traders like me, everybody in the Discord or everybody in Telegram or whatever that knows how to trade. So then we're getting in here, clean slate. We already know it's going. Easy, stress-free. We don't have to worry because we already know what happens under this level. We're already seeing what happened under this level. Why did I get in sales at the top? Because I was looking at it long term. The reason I got in up here or over here is because I was looking at it over here. I'm just telling you of like why price broke that high. I got in based off of this because I seen price come from here to here. So what do you, if price does that, what do, you, what do I think it's going to go first? It's going to come here first. It broke that, made a new low. So we have a new low. It pulled back, gave a correction back into here. So then you could have been selling back under this level, back to here. So then what did it do? Ended up making a new low overall. What is it going to do? It's going to take everybody out. Everybody that's getting into trades is going to take them out. Got buyers getting into the market, taking them out too. Now we just got price consolidating and doing whatever, but now we're looking for this. This is what we're looking for because we know under here, this is our indication. Now we have a correction going on. And once price comes back to here, where is it gonna go, bro? It's coming back to here. Bro, trading is not hard, bro. You still bought sell at the very top. Huh? You still bought sell at the top of that. Oh, I always sell from the top, bro. I don't know what be wrong with me. I'd be fucking cracked out when it comes to trades like that. I'd be fucking hawking it like a chart. I meant charts. Fucking whatever, whatever it is. Hawk. I'm dead. <laughs> hawking it like a hawk. Whatever the saying is. But yeah, that's the reason why I got into that trade at the top from here. 
and there's new lows in the market. So with that being said, when it comes to getting into these swing trades, you can't just do like some baby little TP, right? Like when price makes an indication and it makes that correction, when it's doing the continuation, that continuation is coming back to the indication because it's trying to repeat that cycle again. It's trying to give you like, all right, if there's an indication and then there's a correction, when that continuation is coming down, it's trying to repeat, it's a trend. That's why we trade with the trends. So when it breaks, that's another indication, a correction, a continuation. So that's how the trend continues, by keep making indications. So when price starts to sell on this trade, it's gonna to try to come to where the indication was to make a new one, or at least come to this level to you know, test the waters out again. He said, pause, what did I say wrong? Uh, no problem, man. But yeah, bro, like the same thing over and over. <clears throat> I don't know about Nas on the other hand, because that shit is moody. <laughs> Yo, I don't know about this one, because this one on the other hand, this was a full, full blown downtrend. Price found the level of support. As I say, price makes a low, price makes a high. What did it break? Gave us an indication, correction, and now we have a new high indication. So soon we can have a correction and then a continuation up to this previous high. Possibly. I seem like a curly cool dude. Yeah, I'm pretty chill. Yeah, so that's, I mean, well, it just comes with time, bro. I'm, I'm willing to wait, bro, because I know it's a lot of money to be made. So I'm not even stressing it, bro. Y'all want to meet me too? I'm trying to go to the uh, Forex Summit, bro. We're going to figure it out, bro. He'll bite you. I'm dead. I feel like Marielli, I, I've seen. Nah. Yo, it's 12. Somebody texts me saying, why were you really, why were you willing to risk it all? <laughs> Bro, if you was in my position, you would risk, you would have risked your life. Oh, it was, it was no, it was, I, bro, I was literally, and I've never told nobody this story, bro, but I remember, I've, I've never told nobody this story. I fucking, um, I was, I was 15 and, um, 15, I was already on probation from fighting in school. I got expelled ninth grade year and I got kicked out. I got kicked out. That's what expelled me for some of you guys. Um, I got kicked out ninth grade year. And at that moment I was like, all right, school's not for me. I still ended up going back to school 10th grade year, but at that moment I was like, school is not for me. This is it's not for me. I can't do it. It's fucking, it's fucking retarded. Right. So um I ended up getting on probation for that fight. And um I ended up violating my probation. And then um I remember I got arrested at the at the church at this time. And all my friends was watching me going to jail. I spent like a year in juvie because I violated probation by doing another fight. So it was fucking retarded. So I remember on my birthday, I was, I, was, I was still in jail on my birthday at the age of like, on my birthday, I was 16. So I was in my cell. I was just like, bro, I don't understand. And at this time, I didn't, I, don't, I didn't have the mindset that I have now. So it's a little bit different. So now I'm just like, I got to get out of here. Just go have fun. You know, I just want to go have fun again. I just want to be out. And I was like, bro, I can't do it anymore, bro. I, I've been in here for like six months now. It's been like six months and I've been in here and I've, I hate life. Like I didn't love life, bro. And I wish I still had them. I got a tattoo where my baby NASA tattoo is at. I have took like this, um, you know, in the pins, y'all know if you ever seen a fucking click pin, you know, if you like unscrew the cap and shit, the spring come out. I've never told nobody this story, bro. But you know how in the pins they have the little springs or whatever? Um, I took that out. I took the spring out and I, I used to like dig into my skin with the spring, trying to cut something in my arm. Like just trying to cut my fucking wrist or some shit. You know what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? 
No, I'm being dead ass. I still, I took a picture of the scars when I started trading. I'm gonna find the picture, but I was really done with life, bro. Like I was really just done with life. <laughs> like I just didn't find any point of being like, bro, I'm gonna find that picture. I'm gonna show y'all because I cannot cap to y'all, bro. I was sitting, it was, it was my 16th birthday. And I was like, bro, I was like, I'm literally going nowhere in life, bro. Like, I don't have fucking friends. I'm in jail. I, I, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do in the future. I don't know what I'm going to do in the future. So it was like, bro, it's whatever. And then I ended up, uh, the, the dude ended up coming in. This was the nicest officer, bro. His name was uh, Officer Hauser or some shit like that. It was Officer Hauser. Huh? He was white. Yeah, he was like, he came in. He was like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? He was like, what the fuck are you doing? You got so much to prove or some shit like that. And then he, he, he had a birthday present for me. That's why he even came back there. It wasn't even like he caught me. It was like a birthday present. He was like, bro, I know you need this. It was like a cake. It was like, that, that's all he could bring in into a fucking jail. So he gave me like a vanilla cake. It has some um, vanilla ice cream, um, icing on it. It was like a fucking pink cake. And it came in like a, a fucking container. And he wrapped it in a plastic bag so nobody can see him bring it in. Yeah, bro. His, his name was fucking Officer Housing, bro, at the fucking DDJ. Not the DDJ, the DJJ. So, uh, yeah, Department of Justice and uh, fucking, I forgot what it was called. But if you look it up in um, Georgia, it's called the DDJ. It's the juvenile center. You can fucking act, look for the records. I was in there. So anyways, he came in, gave me a fucking cake. And I was like, wow. Like, bro, I've been through so much shit. And at that time, bro, at that time, that's when I was going to get kicked out. Like, I didn't know when I was getting out, I was going to get kicked out. But let's say I didn't know that. I was, I had nobody by my side. My, my aunt that I live with, because I grew up with my aunt. I never grew up with my mom. So my aunt that I was living with, she didn't want to take care of me anymore because she thought I was a bad kid. I didn't have any friends. My girlfriend couldn't do much because her mom was strict. And she was like, she's not letting any type, because I was a thug kind of in a sense. Like I was looked at as a thug. So she wasn't going to let me in the crib. So I had nowhere to go. Nobody picked up the phone calls. I didn't get no like different food from like the money, like money on the books and shit like that. I didn't, like, bro, it was just, it was, I was just, if I was to die in there or like some crazy event to happen, bro, nobody's going to be there. So I was at the end of like damn near life for me. And I heard somebody say faith in God at this time, bro. I, I didn't even, bro, I wasn't even in that direction like I am now. But yeah, that happened to me, bro. And um, I ended up doing it again. After that cake situation, I ended up doing it again because. I don't know. I just it got back into my head. And then I ended up going to what was that place called? I think it was like Ridgeview Institution or some shit. It was like Ridgeview Institution. And it's like a psycho um psycho fucking what is it? Psychological home or psychiatry or some shit? Mental health, mental, it was like mental health hospital, mental institution. Yeah. So I went to the mental institution and I honestly learned a lot from there. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, those shits are pretty useful. I, mean, I learned a lot from there. If it was just me in there, I probably would have been, it would have been better, bro. But I ended up doing that for like two months. I ended up getting out. They do not play, bro. I remember I walked in there with my shoelaces. They was like, yeah, you can't have those. It's a fucking hazard. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. And then, bro, I was in there for like a month or two. And then I ended up getting out of all that and I was going back home and then that's when I got kicked out. So then I, I hit another rock bottom. Just when you thought shit couldn't get worse from going through mental hospital, wanting to kill yourself and shit, I ended up getting kicked out. And bro, I didn't know what I wanted to do with life, bro. At that point, I was just like, bro, it just couldn't get any worse. It was like, bro, like I thought I learned. I thought I was doing better. Like when I got out, I was like, bro, I'm changed. Like I felt changed. Like I felt, I, I felt like I can go on and do something big, you know? But my aunt at the time, she was like, no, she just knows me as the bad kid I was before all this happened. She didn't know what happened during the time that I was going through all this. I didn't tell her. 
So then I got kicked out and I was homeless. Um, most of y'all know the story after I ended up finding some jobs. I slept at McDonald's. I slept at Taco Bell whenever I could. And then I ended up getting into contact with my real mom. And then I ended up moving back in with my real mom. And then I found the job from there. And I just kind of did, did my thing from there. Ended up fast forward, ended up finding two jobs, working those two jobs until I started learning how to trade, learned how to trade, did good in trading. And then, bro, it was like, it's from there, bro. And every time I look back, bro, like I got fucking baby Nat, like literally where my baby NASA tattoo is at. I have scars all down my arm, bro. I wish I, well, I don't wish, cause I, I still remember when they went away, when they finally went away, I was like, damn. Like that shit was like motivation to me, bro. When I used to move boxes, cause it didn't fade into like probably like two years ago, like two years ago. To be honest, it started fading when I, when I started trading. But um, yeah, when I used to move boxes for my, um, my mom's boyfriend, because he had a moving business, people used to ask me, what are those scars for? And I never wanted to tell them, bro. Because like, I was just like, bro, that, that was the old me. I wish I still had it for motivation to wake me up every day, but it, it is what it is. I still remember it as a human being. But that's just some shit I've never told nobody, but I just felt like somebody needs to hear that. Like, y'all think, y'all think, oh, shit was lolly dolly, bro. It wasn't like that, bro. It was like my shit, like my mom, my aunt, nobody in my family was rich. I literally, all the money I had, I fucking worked for everything, bro. Like it wasn't fucking, oh, you got rich off of uh, fucking your parents or anything, bro. I literally worked for everything, bro. And I probably, bro, I've learned so much, bro. I remember fucking working at, Crystal's on Cleveland Avenue. Most of you guys, I know none of, barely any of y'all work. I mean, live in Atlanta, but in Atlanta, that's fucking one of the roughest spots in fucking Georgia. Cleveland Avenue, bro. And I remember I seen this dude get shot right in front of me. I'm fucking 17. And I seen a dude get shot right in front of me. And I was like, what the fuck? And that was the world. Like, I, I, I don't see that anymore. Like, I'm be honest, I, I don't see that anymore because why well, be in that type of environment? I don't need to be in that type of environment. I was like, bro, I was like, <laughs> a wise man told me, not even a wise man, a good friend of mine told me, bro, nothing happens by accident. Nothing happens by accident. So whatever you're going through, bro, I just felt like somebody needs to hear that, bro. It's whatever you're going through, bro, trust, bro. It's, it's not the end of the world. Even though it feels like the end of the world, it's not the end of the world. You're going to get through it. All you got to do is keep your head up, bro. Focus on the goal that you have to go to. And don't focus on the problem that's in front of you, bro, because you focus on the problem. You're going to forget what you're even aiming for. In the, in the, in the, in the, bro, I can't even talk. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're going to forget where you're going, bro. So just, So just stay focused on... Well, I know. All right, see you tomorrow, man. But, bro, just focus on where you got to go, bro. Just keep your head up, bro. I don't care if you're fucking 25. I don't care if you're fucking 30. I don't care if you're fucking 45, bro. Like, life, I don't know. I mean, find your purpose in life, but in the end of the day, like, what the fuck are we here for? Like, bro, like, <laughs> Like, we literally just live, and then we die later on. Like, all you guys, like, I'm not trying to be a bummer, but we literally, we all die in the end. So why well, just be upset the whole life? I know, like, I know some things don't turn out how you want it to be, or you're not living the best life that you have. But it's like, bro, enjoy what you have, at least. You know? Enjoy what you have, at least. Because... Like, once that shit gone, it's like, bro, what? But, yeah. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. If I can go back in time, what would, I t what would I tell old Ty? I probably would tell my old self. I'll probably tell him, bro. 
bro, so much. I could tell y'all so many stories, bro. I remember, bro. Let me answer it. So, what I would tell my old self is, focus on, focus on what will make you better. Don't focus on what will make other people happy about you. Don't focus on how would you please other people. Focus on what will please you, because I think that was one of my biggest things going through school in general I was so focused on making everybody else smile but I never made myself smile I never did something to make myself smile I always did something to make other people smile about me and I felt like if I made somebody smile they fuck with me you know what I'm saying if I made somebody smile oh they're my friend bro bro it was so bad bro you know the vending machines in high school It'd be like 50 cents, a dollar for snacks. I didn't even have a dollar for snacks, bro. Like, I don't even have a dollar. But yeah, um, bro, I remember the same friends I met in ninth, ninth grade. We used to skip class. I used to smoke with them. Because I used to smoke, but I stopped smoking after this incident. So I used to smoke with them and do all types of fights, get into fights and stuff. I remember there was this one time. We was at we was at the school and we was in the student parking lot and it was like a fifteen on fifteen. It was like all my friends and some other gr dudes group of friends and we was all in the parking lot just fighting. And I remember the fucking security guard coming down in his little go kart and he was like, "Yo, break up the fight!" And everybody was just taking off running. It's like fucking thirty kids in the fucking student parking lot just taking off running everywhere. <laughs> but shit was the craziest thing ever. Um. What else, bro? Uh, fucking, yeah. So, anyways, fast forward. Um, I ended up getting jumped by all five those five friends I had. I had five friends. It was Carlos, uh, Gio, fucking Jordy, and I forgot the other two's names. I think it was Hector and some other nigga. I don't even know his name. I don't remember his name. But they ended up jumping me in the fucking at the church behind the church because behind the church it's like this big ass field. It's like a big field um, where people just play football and soccer and shit. So they jumped me back there. It was on a fucking, like the setting sounded like a movie, but it wasn't a movie, bro. I'm telling you the truth. Like it was fucking like slick raining, but like sprinkling in a sense. It was gloomy. And bro, I, I tried to, at first it started off where it was like, y'all y'all trying to fight? Y'all trying to have like a slap box? If most of you guys don't know what slap boxing is, it's like, it's like fake fighting. In a sense, it's like fake fighting, in a sense. You're fighting, but you're not really punching. You know what I'm saying? It's like slapping, slap box. So we did that. And then um, it was like one dude versus one dude. He was slapping them, slap, slap. And then there was another dude. They was slap boxing. And then it was some dude slap boxing me. And then it came where I was slap boxing two people at one time. And then it came to three people. And the next thing you know, it was like five people on me trying to slot box me at one time. And I'm like, why is everybody ganging up on me? And then that's when I started feeling real punches being thrown at me. And then I started reacting, throwing punches back. I threw a punch way too hard. And then, wait, what? I, anyways, I, I threw a punch back. I ended up throwing it too hard. And then I slipped and fell in this own um, fucking slippery grass. And then I ended up getting jumped from there. They started stumping me out. My fucking lip was blessed, busted and stuff. I'm just, I'm just telling you, shut the fuck up. It's a question. Wait, what? What happened? Well, I don't have a Lambo because if I can't buy, if I can't buy all my boys a Lambo, so if I can't buy 10, 12 people a Lambo, I don't want a Lambo. Why don't you have fucking money in your pockets? No, I just want let me let me not be rude. Anyways, uh <laughs> um anyways, um yeah, bro. I ended up getting jumped, bro. And bro, it was like, bro, and uh, I will post it. Yeah, so, yeah, they and my boys, but at the time, I thought they was my cold-hearted friends, bro. 
See, I, he did not jump me this morning. Anyway, I ended up getting jumped one time. Wait, did I tell y'all? Did I tell y'all the story where I think we're pretty much, bro? I got so many stories for you guys. Did I tell y'all like the story where um, where I actually blew up in stock trading, and then my ex that went back to her ex. So I had a girl at the time, and she she wanted a family at twenty. And she wanted me to work a normal job and we just have a life like that, right? And I wanted to get fucking rich. Like, I just wanted to get rich. And she was like, no, you don't need all that. You can just live a happy life. Yeah, I told y'all, I told y'all that story. I had texting her and I was like, she was like, what do you know? She was like, what do you know? I was like, I know how to fucking trade. Yeah, because I remember that. She was like, you never spent time with me. Like... She was like, why haven't you like, she was, no, the question was, she was like, why don't you ever spend time with me? And I was like, I don't know. And then she was like, what do you know? I was like, I know how to fucking trade. And then I blocked her after that. But yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So I picked her up. I took her out on a date in the fucking Lambo Urus. I took her out on a date in the Urus. And, you know, I'm going to act out. I'm driving fast, speeding through the traffic and shit just to show off. I took her to a nice little dinner or whatever. I think the dinner was like 300, 400 bucks. And, you know, from where from where I grew up at, that's a lot of money at the time. But I have fucking hella bread. So then um, I ended up taking her back to her boyfriend's house and I sped off. And that was the last time I talked to her, bro. I was like, she texts me after that, but I ain't text her back. Cause I was like, oh, you with that dude that works at the airport. Yeah, okay. That's good. You didn't want to wait for me. You didn't, I was broke. Like she was waiting, but then she was like, she couldn't wait for long. So I was like, all right, that's cool. That's whatever. You didn't want to wait for me to blow up. You know, it is what it is. Now, I don't stalk her, but now she has like a fucking kid with the dude that works at the airport. And yeah, bro, and she, that girl had mental problems, bro. Like not mentally like fucking ill or anything, but like her mindset on things wasn't the like mindset that I needed, bro. It's like her mindset was just straight on. She just wanted a family. Like that's all she wanted. Like, yeah, I feel like I'm too young for that, bro. I'm too young for that, bro. Like, I want to have a family at fucking 30. You know what I'm saying? Like, cool. That's cool. At least. But, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking you guys' head off, bro. I'm going to stop talking you guys' head off. I'm, I'm going to get some sleep. Um, Robert, I seen James texting me as well, so I already know what your message is about. I'm going to hit you up in the morning. Um. Yeah, I'm out of here. I'm going to post this in a telegram. I love you guys. Yeah. yeah, bro. Just make sure you fucking keep pushing, bro. Don't call me. Don't call me tonight, bro. I'm not picking up the phone, bro. But yeah, make sure you guys keep pushing. Fuck what everybody else is talking about. Fuck what anybody said about your dreams. Fuck them. Bro, do what you got to do to get your bag. Do what you got to do to clear your brain. Because it's it's not just about the money. You literally have to have the right mindset, bro. So fuck what anybody else says about your dreams, bro. Just keep pushing.